This episode is supported by Squarespace. Okay, we know a lot about dinosaurs, like how big they were, what they ate, even how quickly they moved. But there is one question that has plagued paleontologists for decades. What color were dinosaurs? It might sound superficial, but trust me, it is not, because until we understand their coloration, we'll never be able to fully imagine dinosaurs. We won't know what they really looked like, of course, but we also won't be able to study things like camouflage or display behavior. And we will never know the full extent of just how wrong the Jurassic Park movies are. Thankfully, in recent years, a more complete picture of dinosaurs has come into focus and it is in Technicolor. When you picture a dinosaur, the colors that come to mind probably vary depending on how old you are. For much of the 20th century, for instance, dinosaurs were always depicted in drab colors. Gray, green, and brown. That's because back then, most experts thought that dinosaurs behaved like overgrown lizards, so they probably looked like that too. Starting in the 1970s, dinos started to be portrayed as having things like spots and stripes and flashy colors, but not a lot of that was actually based on science. Then it came a major breakthrough through from an unexpected place. It wasn't a dinosaur, but a fossil squid. In 2006, while a graduate student at Yale, paleontologist Jacob Vinther was studying a fossil squid with preserved ink sacs. Those are the little organs where squids store the defensive inks. And when Vinther studied them under a microscope, he saw that the sacs were filled with tiny spheres. Other paleontologists had seen these little blobs before, but they thought they were just fossilized bacteria. But to Vinther's eye, they looked like special structures that help give animals color, melanosomes. If you've heard of these before, it's probably because you have them. Lots of animals do. Melanosomes are responsible for all of your body's coloration, from your skin to your eyes to your hair. Each melanosome contains some type of melanin, which is a natural pigment. And based on their density and distribution, they can create different colors. Now I know what you're wondering. What in the name of Charles R. Knight does a Jurassic squid have to do with dinosaurs? Well, you know what else has melanosomes? feathers. Experts can look at the feather of a living bird, like a cardinal or a crow, and see what kind of melanosomes make that feather's color. For example, long skinny melanosomes make black and gray, like the black you find around a cardinal's eyes. But if melanosomes are short and round, they make reddish colors, like what you would see on red tail hawks. This information can be used as a template for studying ancient animals. So living dinosaurs are basically the color key to extinct dinosaurs. In 2010, this idea was put to the test in a place that's famous for its abundant fossils of feathered dinosaurs, China. There, a team of Chinese and British scientists studied what might be one of the most adorable dinosaurs ever, the chicken-sized Cynosauropteryx. Cynosauropteryx was the first non-avian dinosaur to be discovered with structures of feather-like fluff back in 1996. And after studying the melanosomes found in that fuzz, researchers determined that Cynosauropteryx was ginger. Its downy coat was apparently reddish brown over most of its body, but its tail was a little different, alternating between light and dark bands, giving it some extra flair. Vinther and his colleagues used this same technique to reconstruct the plumage of another feathery pigeon-sized dinosaur called Anchiornis. And it turns out that this dinosaur looked kind of like punk rock magpie, mostly black and white on its wings and legs with a splash of red on its top. After this, the colors of more dinosaurs were soon revealed. The four-winged Microraptor, it had dark iridescent plumage, kind of like a raven, and one specimen of the little horned dinosaur Cytacosaurus was even found to have melanosomes in its skin, revealing that the dino was dark on top and light underneath. Pretty cool, right? As long as the dinosaur is preserved with feathers or some other structure that keeps melanosomes intact, scientists can figure out their basic colors. Now this is all awesome and exciting, but these discoveries are about a lot more than just what dinosaurs looked like. They can also tell us about how how they lived. For example, in birds, we know that feathers aren't just used for flight. They're also an important part of display behavior. So Cynosauropteryx probably didn't have a banded tail just by chance. Its flashy pattern tells us that this dinosaur may have had something to say to other members of its species, like that he wanted to claim his territory or show off how fit he was for the ladies. And the pattern found on Cytacosaurus, dark on top and light below, is a common phenomenon seen in lots of modern animals. It's called countershading, and it would have helped this little herbivore blend in while walking through the sun-dappled forest. Thanks to these developments, experts are beginning to uncover the colors of many other feathered dinosaurs, and new types are being found all the time. So now we can start answering that question that's been bugging us for so long, and memo to Hollywood, if you're planning on having a Cynosauropteryx in Jurassic World 2, which you should be because they're cute, now you know what color it was.
Thanks to Squarespace for supporting this episode. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, Squarespace can help you win the internet. I mean, don't you want a place to post your Jurassic World 2 fan theories? Because I want to read them. And Squarespace provides an all-in-one platform with templates that let you set up a website easily. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. And guess what? As an Eons viewer, you can start your free trial with Squarespace at squarespace.com slash eons. All you gotta do is enter offer code eons to get 10% off your first purchase. What do you want to know about the story of life on Earth? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to go to youtube.com slash eons and subscribe. Also, do yourself a favor and check out some of our sister channels from PBS Digital Studios. Your brain will thank you.